Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Doctor Projections. My name is Lucas, and I have Eric here as always. Hey guys. So today we'll be taking a look at the 2020 presidential election according to The Economist's forecast. Um, we did this video, I think, a month ago, or maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, things have changed that we do think must be discussed. Um, and with that being said, let's get right into it. <clears throat> so, The Economist's overall prediction is that Joe Biden is very likely to be very likely in the Electoral College. Yeah. 92% chance. Wow. Um, that it used is to be, yeah, 86. That's, that, that's a lot. Yeah, it used to be yeah. 5 out of 6, and now it's 9 out of 10. Yeah, better than 9 out of 10, actually. Um, their vote ranges are 452 to 450, sorry, 252 to 415, which I do think is quite reasonable. We have it right now at like 330-something. Am I remembering that correctly from yesterday's episode? I don't remember. So 123 through 286, yeah, I think that it is interesting to see that Donald Trump's best case is basically what he got in well, – yeah, basically what he got in 20... Actually, less than what he got in 2016. Um, so, let's look at the graph here. How things have changed. Last time we did this episode, it was all the way back in, I believe, May. Or actually, maybe early June. Yeah, somewhere here. Um, yeah, things have clearly helped Biden mm -hmm. here. What's more interesting, though, I think, is that at one point in time, the Economist actually had President Trump leading by 10 electoral votes. And it I think was that was during the time... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very competitive back then. It was back and forth, as Lucas is about to say. But then it just branches apart, as you can see. I agree. And um, we were discussing this earlier. Um, if coronavirus didn't happen and all these events didn't happen as well, we would still think it's a 50-50 race. Um, clearly now, things have very much gone in Biden's favor here. Because I think at this point in time, they still had Wisconsin – going for Trump, which many of the people did, which we did as well. Um, but things have obviously changed, especially in the blue area, blue wall area as well. Um, we do a see, we do see a slight dip here for Joe Biden um, from like 57 to 50, 350. That's, I think that at the moment. I think um, the reason why that's happening is just because of not much um, recently in the news is helping Joe Biden. And I think the steam that he, that he was building off of is starting to come down, calm down just a bit. Mm -hmm. So we don't see this huge decline, but it's calmed down a bit just because just all these movements and all this coronavirus news is getting old. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's not as groundbreaking as it was before. Yeah, essentially, the, the mainstream media isn't really covering it that much anymore. So um, not really helping his case that much. So, um, again, 54, he, had a, he had a almost a 10% chance of winning Trump, but now it's changed a lot. All right. So I think this is a simulation thing where they checked what would happen for every single event. Uh, whoa, that's interesting. Whoa. That was so, cool. uh, so I guess that's how they predict it. So they're thinking either somewhere around three, I can't do math today. Um, so around like 319 to like 370 ish. Interesting. We probably fall somewhere around here. Yeah. Right? That, that, yeah. that's a bit more realistic. <sighs> we don't think it's going to be such an insane landslide, but at the moment we do have Biden likely winning this election. Before we look at this map, I just want to take a look at the other stuff, too. Uh, the forecasted popular vote, 54 to 45. Is that more than 2008? No, I don't think it is, but that's not a large number of votes. Um, so they're, predicted, they're predicting that by election day, it will go down to 54 to 45, because obviously, I think that it will narrow up. So in a sense, Joe Biden got lucky, but in a sense, he didn't in that... Um, kind of coronavirus and this whole crisis thing happened early or hap it did happen in 2020. If this happened earlier in Trump's term, it might not have hurt him so much because right now the election is November. People are going to remember this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, but in yeah. a sense, he's not really that lucky in that it didn't happen later. So that would have helped him even more. Yeah. But, yeah. As a result, um, people are more motivated to go out and vote 
as this is fresh in their minds and they do want to increase the turnout. And they're like, oh, we can make a difference right now. The election is just right around the corner, which is why it's hitting Donald Trump um, pretty hard. Right. Um, I think that's it. Yep, that's all the information we have here. So now we'll head to the map here. Um, we did see certain changes here. Let's let's just quickly read what this says. Um, take an account size or similar. You were probably in Wisconsin too. Okay, yeah, fair point there. Um, so look, let's look at the changes. Some states have changed. Actually, a drastic number of states have changed. Um, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Minnesota, or this is always very likely. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Why do you say Pennsylvania for Michigan? Michigan, Pennsylvania. Essentially, uh, they, yeah, essentially the blue wall, which is a very important section of the um, for Biden to win, has changed one whole section. And Lucas can explain the margins that they have up there. Um, yeah, it is a bit strange how they do it. Um, likely is our characterization of lean. Very likely is likely. Safe is safe. So... Uh, very likely. So they're putting these three blue wall states as likely as maybe Michigan, but I feel like the other two are a little bit, uh, a little bit slimmer than likely is so far. Yeah. Cause Donald Trump, in, yeah. yeah he, Donald Trump did take these states in 2016. So it, and these are the more competitive of the two. So I don't, yeah, I don't think just yet that it's likely. Again, if it moves in this direction, it's possible, but not yet. I agree with that. Um, now, another change they made, which we completely agree with, is they also moved New Mexico to safe, because at this point, I think it's safe. Um, let's actually dig deeper into some of these states. Let's start with the state of Pennsylvania. Actually, let's start with Wisconsin, because it's the most likely one to be able to go to. Uh, Joe Biden is it not like it's not clickable. Dang. Donald okay. Trump. Go, you, Lucas Donald sorry, Trump. sorry, Donald Trump. Oops, sorry. Uh, Wisconsin now. Eighty-eight percent chance. That's a really good shot, considering yeah. that at one point in time we had Trump winning Wisconsin. Eighty-eight is really good because just like them, we thought he was going to win it in early March. Um, Sixty-one and thirty-nine. This was kind of the peak of Donald Trump. He had a rising approval rating. Before, obviously, it crashed. Um, then we saw a back and forth here. But now we are seeing Joe Biden expand his lead. First, this hump is likely the coronavirus increasing. Then we saw the Black Lives Matter uh, movements. Um, and that obviously helped Joe Biden as well. Because um, we might see increased turnout of African Americans who do usually tend to vote for the Democratic candidate. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's look at polling now. Polling has been in the beginning, back and forth. Now, um, Biden does have a larger lead. Um, so interestingly here, he, they say that the economist says that the average public polls weighs them by sample size and adjusts for persistent partisan bias. So essentially, a pollster like Trafogler would probably move a bit to the left because they do tend to vote. Sorry, they do tend to pull more to the conservative side. So 53 to 46, that's about the same as 538. Sorry, that's like, what's that? Is that nine points? No, it's not nine points. Oh. No, it's, uh, it's uh, seven. Seven, seven points. So that's about the same as um, 538. 538 puts it at 6.9, I believe. Uh, Wisconsin, I think it's a little bit less than an 80% chance. I gave it a, like a 70% chance, 70 to 75 at the moment. But I think it probably will go to Joe Biden anyway. All right, Eric, how about we talk about Michigan now? We'll be head there. Yep. So let's see what they have here. They have a 9 in 10 chance, or around 90% of Joe Biden winning. Um, I do also think this is just a little on the high side. Maybe it's like 85 to 80. Because, um, again, Donald Trump did take this state as well in 2016 election. Obviously, I'm not denying that times haven't changed. Of course, times have changed. But um, we just have to make sure, um, or people of Michigan um, have to appeal to Biden and make sure he, they, he campaigns there and secures that spot. But it, it's, in my opinion, Michigan is going to Joe Biden. They have a pretty significant African-American electorate, as Lucas has said in previous videos. So it is very likely that Michigan 
is also won by Joe Biden. I give it an 80 to 85, but the economist puts it as 90. I would agree with that. I would give it 85 to 90, actually. Probably around like 88. Because this one probably will go to Joe Biden at the end of the day. It's I think I'm actually kind of inter- it's kind of interesting to see that Trump had a chance of winning this um, by two points, which was not something I expected. I would more expect like I always thought Michigan probably would go to Biden since the beginning, but I guess that was during his peak, as I said before. Whereas Rubber was kind of high. Um, so Poli actually is relatively similar to Wisconsin. Um, so that's interesting to see. But I think at the end of the day, this one will probably go to Joe Biden as well, as we said in the last episode. Um, and the final blue wall state is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Here it is. Um, Pennsylvania, a nine and ten. Wow, this is actually less than uh, Wisconsin, huh? Let That's me give some surprising. background. On the state. Um, was, it's not going to let me zoom in that much, but let me try to circle it. So. Um, Okay, so um, we have in Pennsylvania, East Pennsylvania. East Pennsylvania, you have all the world, sorry, all the the pretty big cities. Um, Philadelphia, um, all those big ones here. And it's also right next to New York City. Well, not next to it, but it's near New York City. So this part of the area has a lot more population. as a result, it does have a lot more big cities, and big cities usually do tend to vote for the Democrats. On the other hand, you have West Pennsylvania, which I do think really helped Donald Trump in 2016. Um, secure, the, secure the win. Yeah. yeah. Um, West Pennsylvania is a lot more conservative, and the reason why is because it's a lot more rural than East Pennsylvania is, and it's more near these conservative states here. I feel like, like Saul, Iowa I feel like and Ohio and Indiana. Yeah, like those states. I feel like Salt Kong right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> um, so that is why Pennsylvania is kind of a split state in that sometimes it will go to, um, well, most of the time it does go to the Democrat because it is part of the blue wall. Um, but that's kind of why Donald Trump won it in. 2016. All right, now let's go into this uh, graph here. Back and forth in the beginning, no surprise here. We had it as a pure toss-up as well. We see a huge drop, as in some of the other states too. With the, the when we were in the midst of coronavirus, obviously things have gone very bad for President Trump, and he's been in a downward decline. Um, and polling support that supports that as well. Wow, these polls are actually very similar. Um, 53% Biden, 46.5 Trump. Joe Biden is actually from the city of Scranton. Um, well, he wasn't from, but he was born in the city of Scranton. Um, and I believe he did move to Delaware, Newcastle. Um, but hmm, I wonder how that might impact it. Um, predicted popular vote share 48 to 58. And the answer interesting to say, I, I think maybe probably somewhere around there as well. But overall, with these three blue wall states, I know I've said it several times, but Joe Biden should be focusing on these states, locking them down, taking them, and winning with them. Because he doesn't need Florida. He's a, he doesn't need Arizona. He just needs these three states. Not even North Carolina. Not even North Carolina. All right. Let's actually go to Texas now, because Texas is getting kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm just wondering how much it might have changed so far. They actually, it is a lean in our standards, which is quite interesting here. Anyways, um, essentially, Texas has been changing quite uh, a lot. Well, not a lot. More in that polling has been showing it being very close. Biden... Very close. Too close for Texas. Um, Trump, currently, the average, according to 538, is a 0.7% lead for Trump. However, Biden, at one point in time, was leading by... 0.1. 0.1. Actually, no, it was it was actually slimmer than 0.7. 0.7 is Iowa. Um, but this is obviously much tighter than um, expected in the state of Texas, which is usually a solid red state. It has not voted for a Democrat since, I want to say, 1964, but it could be 76. One of those two. <clears throat> Will it go to Biden this time? We made a whole video on this. Uh, we don't believe so, but... Nope. Not in yet. The future, yes. 
Um, seven, I feel like Biden has, I'd give it 30, 35%. Um, but I think this is a fair characterization here. But let me actually yeah. head back to the national forecast. Now I think we should probably talk about the states in particular that they have changed because we kind of did make a video on this before. We don't want to get, we don't want it to get too repetitive. So um, what has changed? Iowa has changed. Montana has changed. And Florida, no, Florida has not changed. Let's discuss North Carolina, Iowa, and Montana because we don't want this video to get too long as they always are. Yep. Um, I'll start with Montana. Uh, Montana is interesting in that it um, often votes for different parties on the state level, but on the presidential election it level, it has always, almost always voted for the Democrat. The last time Montana was competitive was in 2008 with Barack Obama, um, but uh, Barack Obama was um, a pretty good candidate in that he was able to use new campaigning techniques and um, uh, George W. Bush obviously was at the end of his, um, his presidency was very poorly approved of and it was very hard for a Republican candidate like John McCain to win. So um, we don't really use 2008 because it was an interesting election year. Landslide. Before that, 1996, uh, Bill Clinton did win the state of Montana. I think, was it 96 or 92? One of those two years, Clinton did win. So Montana is usually a solid red on the, on the presidential level, state level, sometimes votes for the Democrats. We see that yep. with their one, they have one Democratic senator, John Tester, and they currently have a Democratic governor, uh, Steve Bullock, who is also running for the Senate. So, and that's a really close race, too. It is. 19 and 20, 99% chance. I mean, it was a change because safe is higher than 99. So I guess uh, some improvements for Joe Biden. He went from, oh, he had 2% at one point, but 99%. Mm -hmm. Will this go to Trump? Probably. The new polls out <clears throat> show Biden uh, trailing by a considerable margin. Well, not considerable, mm -hmm. but it was a decent margin he was trailing by. Yeah. So Montana is not really a focus state for us, but uh, we just might have to Biden should not focus on the state either. It, it, there's yeah. no purpose for him there, to do no so. <laughs> um, what else? So I said North Carolina, right? Actually, let's check out Iowa now. Eric, you want to talk about Iowa? Yeah. So this surprisingly became a close race very quickly. Uh, for any of our viewers who have been with us since the beginning, we were usually putting Iowa as likely. Then we moved down to lean. Okay, it's getting just a little competitive. Now you know, the economist is putting it as tilt where, I mean, no, they're putting it as toss up. We're putting it as tilt to the Republicans. So clearly, and as Lucas is showing in that graph, um, things have gradually been uh, declining for Donald Trump and rising for Joe Biden. Um, Trump still has a 61% chance of taking Iowa. It's, and he did win the state in 2016. So that chance um, has still been retained from 2016 we still, at the end of the day, do think Trump will take the state, um, but it's definitely going to be a lot more competitive than we, um, than we used to think. Um, again, Joe Biden, this shouldn't be his top priority. If Iowa goes to Donald Trump, which it likely will, Biden will still have a good chance. Let's take a look at polling here. Um, as in 538, it's pretty close. Um, just... 1%, Trump is up by one percentage point, according to the polls. So clearly, there is some competition here. Once again, lastly, I'll say at the end of the day, Donald Trump will probably take the state. Joe Biden should not focus on it. And this is only um, six electoral votes. It doesn't really matter to him that much. Mm -hmm. This is should not be a priority. Um, but I, I do agree that it's about a 6 one sorry, percent chance right now. As I said, in the Ohio, I think. No. Uh, no, sorry. In, uh, I forgot which day I said it, but um, polling only shows Trump up by 0.7 points, um, which is kind of close for this more conservative area of this country. Went to Trump in 2016 by nine points. Um, but we do think that Trump at the end of the day will carry the state. Um, let's head to North Carolina now. North Carolina. Um, I don't think this one actually changed. You know what? Let's not do North Carolina because um, if we're going to focus on the ones that changed, then um, 
to actually see. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't put um, Arizona as likely um, Biden because I do think that it has moved and trended more to Biden's column now. We put it as a lean yesterday. Let's see. what Anything else that changed? Mm-hmm. We talk about Arizona. Did that change or that was still toss-up? No, that was always toss-up, I believe. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, okay. So, like, states like Missouri and Indiana did change. <clears throat> we can take a look at some of them now because maybe it's interesting to talk about. Yeah. Um, but in our opinions, let's go to Indiana first. Actually, yeah, Indiana. This is probably 99% chance going to Biden. I mean, Trump, 98 yeah, um, his vice president, Mike Pence, is from Indiana. He used to be the governor, which is quite a bit of experience. So, once again, Biden should not be surprised if he doesn't win this state. This is pretty much safe. I don't know why the Economist puts it as likely maybe polling. Well, we're about to check that out right um, now. No, just to remind everyone that they're putting it as very likely, and that's still a 98% chance. Yeah. Of their their so, margins are kind of weird. Yeah, so I, I agree with this. It's probably ninety eight percent chance that does Trump does win because uh, I don't think Biden could win this. The last time it went to a Democrat was two thousand eight Obama, but again, those were different circumstances, um, especially with Trump's running mate being Mike Pence. Um, that will probably help him a lot in this state as well. A state like um, what other states changed? Missouri changed. But I still think it's like a ninety-eight percent. Yeah, ninety. Oh, ninety-five percent. Okay, yeah, a little bit it, slower. It, it did go down, but again, ninety-five percent is ninety-five percent, even for a state like uh, Missouri. We really do think that um, we will go to Donald Trump, no problem. Maybe in states like these, the margins will slim up a bit. But again, it's going from like ninety-eight to ninety-five percent. Donald Trump still has a pretty good shot. He shouldn't worry about this flipping whatsoever. So, yeah, Missouri does have a African-American po- and African-American population of around 11%. It's not too much, um, but we could see higher turnout from those groups. Additionally, um, Missouri's polling, as you saw in our polling video, although it was only like a couple of polls, I think it did show – a closer margin than we expected, but at the end of the day, Missouri probably will be going to um, Donald Trump anyway. The last time this was competitive for a Democrat was in 2008 again um, with Barack Obama, John McCain. It was apparently so close that Obama could have ordered a recount, but he won the election anyway, so it didn't really matter that much. All right. Um, I do think that is it for all the changes. I guess I'll just give a brief overview of all the other states, battleground states. We can gloss through those. Florida, Biden has an edge right now, especially with the coronavirus cases impacting it. Um, Arizona, in our opinion, should also be lean. Um, lean because it is, area. Yeah, it is rapidly moving um, in, to the left. Um, I believe that is it. Ohio. We think it's near toss-up, a slight, slight edge for President Trump, but I think that toss-up is completely fine. But I'm just curious now. I just want to check what it is, actually. Ooh, it's actually not considered competitive, is it? It's not. Oh, it is. Never mind. Oh, they actually have a Biden lead here. Yeah, it's a um, one and polling, two. Polling does support that. And I, I do think that at this point, it is moving more to the left. And uh, Joe, John Kasich's um, endorse or predicted endorsement or expected endorsement at the DNC will probably help benefit Joe Biden as well with the numbers going up, as we said in the last episode. But I do think that is the, that is all the changes for today. So with that being said, that is the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.